One of the most important processes that frame the information processing approach is attention. Before this cognitive approach made headway, the dominating view of the behaviorists argued that children learned through reinforcements and punishments, and that only what was observable was credible. With the advent of computers, cognitive psychologists began to view children as little computers, whose capacity for knowledge expanded as they grew older. So what is attention? Santrock defines attention as the focusing of mental resources. And psychologists have subdivided the allocation of attention into four distinct categories, selective attention, divided attention, sustained attention, and executive attention. Selective attention is when you focus on one single component in your environment at one time. Imagine you're on the train from Barcelona to Paris with your sister. You're surrounded by the noises of the train moving over the tracks, the couple chatting beside you, and the ticket inspector saying, Ticket, s'il vous plaît, as he walks down the rows. The ability to focus solely on what your sister is saying, to the exclusion of all else, is selective attention. Divided attention, on the other hand, is the ability to divide your attention between two or more things at once. You're at a concert, listening to the music while posting a selfie of yourself on Facebook. You're watching Game of Thrones while writing your Pekka Kucha script. These are examples of divided attention. Sustained attention is the capacity to focus one's attention on something for a given amount of time. This allocation of attention usually improves as a child gets older. Being able to sit down and practice the piano for more than 15 minutes can be killer for a child of seven. And although it may still stink at 36, your sustained attention makes practicing for longer periods of time plausible. This is also called vigilance. The last allocation is called executive attention. This type of attention includes planning and goal setting and self-monitoring for errors and progress as well as having the ability to deal with new and changing conditions. I imagine this might be the kind of attention a surgeon might use in the midst of a difficult pancreatic duodenectomy, or the kind we use when writing lesson plans. So, does multitasking improve memory? According to Begley and Interlandi, no. Influenced by the amount of electronic media these days, a child, and I dare say an adult, is forced to divide their attention between any number of devices or activities at once, which can take away the focus from what's actually important. Sustained and executive attention are quite important to cognitive development, especially as it relates to school. As children progress through school, they are expected to develop these two types of attention in order to excel at the ever-increasingly complex academic tasks set before them. Children start out with very limited attention spans. As they grow older, their ability to sustain their attention increases. Sustained attention has been linked with school readiness. Children with sustained attention before kindergarten begins have been associated with better performance in the classroom. As the child grows and the amount of information they perceive increases, their selective and divided attentions also develop, as well as their ability to shift their attention from one task to another. These improvements continue to develop past the age of adolescence.